Hey, welcome back to Perfect Fit Closets. So today we're going to do a standard reach-in closet. Uh, typical design of a standard reach-in closet um, would entail a double hang section, a smaller 18-inch uh, wide uh, shelving unit, uh, kind of right in the middle, and a long hang section. Um, so the reasons for that is double hang, it's great for the uh, jackets and stuff, shelving power for shoes, um, typically just shelves, but if a client wants to put a wire basket in there for a loose article of items like uh, tubes or gloves, um, etc. Um, and then the uh, long hang section for longer jackets. You would find these um, walk-in closets, or sorry, um, reach-in closets in front entryways, uh, kids' bedrooms is very typical, and uh, some master bedrooms that are a bit smaller. So. Uh, so let's get started with uh, designing. Grab my continuous wall, 24 inch side wall typically, 80 inch back wall I'm going to design with, it's give or take on a typical design, and 24 again. Right click, I got my layout. I don't really want to design my uh, return walls. I can, um, it's very small. But for detail purposes, uh, just keep in mind how far your return walls do come out. So if you put in a drawer bank in the middle, uh, or I mean to the side, it's not going to hit the return wall. Uh, but if you're designing with a drawer bank in the middle, if there is drawers, uh, I would just kind of stick it in the middle uh, for that design. So uh, we'll double click on that. Just on the back wall. I'm going to name this back wall. Hit OK. All right, so I'm going to find my catalog. I'm going to find modules. Uh, I want to do a tall module single. Bring that into design. I'm going to have a 14 inch deep, which is perfect. 84 inches tall. I got my top shelf, toe kick, bottom shelf. Everything looks great. Simple and quick. Just hit OK. Click it there. I'm going to make it 20. Sorry, 19.5, which actually becomes an 18 inch center. Remember, uh, 18 plus the inch and a half, uh, 3 quarter and 3 quarter is 19.5. Okay, right there. So it's off center, not a problem. Go on your top view, right click it, T module, center. Go to your area that you want to center it on, double click the left mouse button. There you go. It centers it. You can see 30 and a quarter, 30 and a quarter. Perfect. Okay. Let's go to wall module single. I'm going to drag that into the left hand side here. I want to do, since I'm not going to cut on site, I'm just going to leave a little bit of room on the left, a little bit of room on the right, so I can just build it. So, super quick build. I'm going to ask for a quarter inch of room between the wall and the panel. Left panel can be full drill, that's fine. And uh, right panel, I want it removed because I'm going to butt it right up into the other tower. Bottom shelf, I want it with a rod. You can see in my layouts here. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to push it right up against the wall here. Okay. Left click my mouse button once. Drag it all the way into my middle tower. Left click the mouse button again. And click off the screen. There we go. So if you zoom right in, you can see that there is a quarter inch of space right there because I asked for it um, in the actual uh, uh, pop up window. Okay, I'm going to do this very similar to the same thing for the right hand side. Bring this over here, drop it over there. 14 inches is great. I want to reduce my height though because I want to make it a long hang section. So I'm going to do about 28 inches, 27 inches is fine. On my right side, I want quarter of an inch as well. Left panel, I want to remove it. Right panel, I can do full drill again or half drill, it doesn't matter. Shelf on the bottom, no, I want a rod. Shelf on the top is correct. Hit OK. So butt it right up into the tower. Left click the button once. Drag it right to the back side wall. Left click again. 
click off of the wall, you can see that there's a quarter inch of space there as well. So it's super slick, super quick. You don't have to uh, retouch the parts or anything. Okay, I'm going to go to my categories, accessories, rods, and oval rod. Drag and drop the oval rod into place. Only for my top section because I do want a double hang. I don't want shells in here. I already have that there, the rod there. So that's all done. I'm going to go back to categories. Go to parts. Shelves. I want one adjustable shelf in here. Drag and drop that item in there. If you don't, if you leave it too much of a space, it kind of looks a little awkward and the client at the end of the day always asks for another shelf. So I typically design that. My fixed shelf. I'm going to put it right somewhere in the middle here. Keep that look. You need three points of contact in a big unit, tall unit like this. So one, two, and three. Those are fixed shelves. Then adjustable shelves. You kind of drag and drop wherever you want it, wherever you see it to deem fit. Keep my spacing up uh, nice. I'm just gonna drag this item up a little bit. There we go. One, two, and three. Perfect. So nice uh, spacing. You get lots of shoes in there, lots of space. Uh, high heels will fit in those spaces. Not a problem. Uh, flat shoes. You know, you probably like five inches of space in between each shelf. That's great. Uh, for high heels, you're looking around 7 inches of space. Um, that's more than adequate. Other than that, there's your design. You can see this is mounted to the wall. You can put a screw into the wall on this side, so it's not a problem. Screw from this gable uh, into the wall, so hold the structure of that. Other than that, that is a very common standard design. Let's go through your 3D view. There we go. So you can really only take a front view of your closet um, because you have the side walls. Here's a little trick that I've learned. Um, you can go back into your design, go into your top view. Make sure you save the file first, just, just a heads up. Go into your top view, right click on the one wall, wall three, so one, two, three. Oh, sorry, go to uh, Properties. You're on wall 3 here. Find your height, put it to 1 inch, just for that one wall. Okay, you go back to your design. Now, if you want, you can take a image with the white, right wall being removed. You can still see it at the bottom of the screen there. And uh, then you can kind of take an angled shot. I have my walls and my floor already preset. In my, uh, pre in my uh, presets, my preferences, um, that's in the beginning of the view tutorials. Uh, so it comes in already done for you. Seems a little dark. Let's bring some light to it. Let's go to scene, 60 watts, makes it a little bit brighter. You can also remove the ceiling, so you can go to the texture, the, uh, the round uh, circles here. You can uh, remove the ceiling. Might brighten it up a little bit more. Or you can go to ceiling. You can go on. Brings the light right up top. But let's position that light. So visible. Oh, sorry. This yellow light, so you're in the ceiling. This yellow light, you can bring it forward a little bit. You can see that the color changes as you, uh, or the brightness changes as you as you bring it across. There, you can see some nice shadow lines and, and so on. So you can go to your view mode. You can select your quality of your picture. Retouch the screen. And it sharpens up a little bit for you. If it's a little bit hard to see, sometimes you want to do a trick. You can go color with edges. More of a kind of a cartoon look to it, but it's really nice and clear. 
And if you click on the launch high quality rendering, click on that, it opens up another window. Just got to give it a moment while it uh, creates it. The nice thing about having the other window uh, open up is that you can go back to your design, you can play around with it while it renders for you. There we go, it gets rendering, sharpens up all the uh, jagged edges on the shelves and etc. You can see my right panel was a, a full drill, the inside's full drill. It's not a problem having the, the holes on the inside, the clothes uh, hide the holes once it's actually um, in there. There, it's a real nice sharp image, looks good. And what you do is you go File, Save As, Save As High Resolution, you hit OK. You do want to make sure that the picture fills the full screen. The smaller the picture, the smaller the image will be. So you do want to maximize it. This is a little bit small uh, than, I, than I like. And then I always save everything to my Google Drive. So I find the, uh, the option menu. I find my Google Drive stream into my drive. And then I, I create the file and account and save everything under that person. Super slick, super nice. Get out of that. Another way to um, hit file, save, sorry, uh, file print. You can print it. Instead of actually printing it, I go print the PDF. I hit all access to view. Then I hit OK. It's going to ask me where I want to save it to. I'll just save it to my desktop for now. I'm just going to say practice. Save. Saves a few pages of design. And if I get out of this, I'll show you what it looks like. Prints a PDF. And I usually call this a plan view. So when I name it, I use a plan. So you can see all the dimensions, where everything is, the design, the front design of it. Scroll down. The top view of it. And there you go. So if you have multiple walls, uh, your design down, it will show multiple walls and then the entire schematic of the top view. You can send that to the client so they have all the literature uh, about the design and dimensions. And then you can also send the pictures as well. And that's all there is to, uh, to it for designing a front entry closet. Super simple, super easy. If you want, you can take some shelves out, put some drawers, put some baskets in. Uh, because it is an 18 inch section, so uh, that's your uh, standard dimension. Okay, thank you very much.